Hey everybody, welcome to John's Briefs. I'm here again with Mark Victor from Attorneys for Freedom. Uh, had a great video a couple weeks ago on the channel with uh, a different Mark uh, from Omaha. Make sure you go watch that one. Had some discussion there, you know, he used an AR-15 in home defense. Two questions that I want to talk to Mark about today. Number one, a couple people said, but wait a minute, he never crossed the threshold and so you can't use deadly force outside your home like that. Second one, I want to talk about using the AR-15 as a home defense firearm. Today's video is brought to us by the generosity of Firearms Legal Protection. Firearms Legal Protection is a legal defense program for lawful gun owners. You win the fight and they will help you win the fight after the fight for the rest of your life. There's a link in the description for a coupon code for a discount for all active self-protection watchers. Mark, as always, man, I really appreciate you coming on the channel and dispensing wisdom that you charge hundreds of dollars an hour for. Thanks for having me. So, uh, overall, from a tactical perspective, I said Mark did a good job, all right? So, uh, and he said he didn't see a weapon in the guy's hand, so he didn't press the trigger. Okay, fine. I think it's kind of sketchy. The guy in the back, I think, might have been armed with a handgun, though it's kind of hard to see. But one of the questions, first question I want to ask you is, uh, a couple people said, but wait a minute, the bad guy, you know, he kicked the door in, but then never crossed the threshold, and so... You hear this myth, like, you know, especially in Texas, people talk about this. You know, if you shoot somebody in the front yard, you drag them in the house because, you know, you got they got to be inside your home. What do you think of that? You know, first of all, I just can't help saying it just warms my heart to see somebody using an AR-15 in a defensive way to mm -hmm. stop bad guys, yep. right? It, it's just more evidence that it's not the weapon that's the, the problem, right? It's the person, the disposition of the person who's holding the weapon. This is why, you know, to call it an assault weapon, this would be an AR-15 defensive weapon. It's a defensive This tool. is the defensive tool here. So, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's true. I don't know why people have this idea that you can't sort of, you lose your right to self-defense if you're outside the home. I think it's important to note that different states have different rules here, right? So. Uh, I can tell you in Arizona, where you do not have to retreat under any circumstances, no. it really is of no consequence whether you're inside or outside the home. In the states where you do have to retreat, the, the issue is, can you safely retreat first before using self-defense? If you can, then you must, unless you're in the home. This guy's clearly in his home. Yeah, right? it's in his and apartment. So mm -hmm. It's not really the issue here. Then people think that, well, the shooting has to be inside the home. That's not the case either. Um, there, you do get a little bit in what I would call of sort of unwritten, unspoken, uh, you're in your home, you get maybe a little bit more latitude there, there's nowhere you could retreat to, your home is your castle. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same way, just to make an analogy that I think a lot of people, uh, maybe people can relate to or not, the First Amendment talks about free speech. It doesn't say political speech is even better protected than non-political speech. But it's fairly understood in it the is. First Amendment context, political speech is the heart of free speech, right? right? That's the reason, really the big reason we have free speech. So you can get out there, government you can get out there and say, you know, bleep the government if you want. You can say F the government all you like because it's free speech. Right. That's the centerpiece of our speech. Well, self-defense sort of has the same sort of unwritten, unspoken type of attitude where you're in your home, you maybe get a little bit more play, but I certainly don't want people to uh, take to that to mean that whatever you do in your home, you're gonna be okay. Right. This is the same to me result, whether you're in your home, whether you're outside your home, whether you're in somebody else's home, whether you're in your car. I think the question here is, was it a reasonable use of force? Um, it's hard to tell from that video exactly what's going on outside, right? I right. mean, if uh, you could imagine a set of circumstances where the knock at the door is, you know, I got the Girl Scout cookies to oh, to deliver, your Girl Scout cookie order is in and they maybe open the door to come in and deliver that. If you stick a gun in somebody's face, you're going to be charged. So we don't know what was said. We don't know whether this was knocking or pounding to smash the door down. All of those things really factor into the analysis. So. Let's assume here that this was pounding on the door. Well, and he kicked the door in. Right, right. But <laughs> prior to that, when this guy went back and got the firearm, there was something going on about right. the pounding on the door that led him to believe there are bad guys who are trying to basically smash the door down. Mm -hmm. Indeed, that's exactly what they do. Yep. you got a right to defend yourself at that point. I think if he pulls the trigger there, he's going to have a problem. Because he, why did you pull the trigger? You didn't see a gun. All you got is... Uh, the threat of ordinary physical force at that point. But you don't have a lot of time, right? This guy, there's, there's a few feet between him and the other person. So I don't think it's unreasonable. 
under these circumstances, assuming we've got the kind of sort of evidence at that door that, hey, I was worried there were bad guys at the door that were going to smash the door down. That's why I got my gun. I didn't have time to call the police. Then the door was smashed down. I think we're okay at that point. So, yeah. so even though these guys didn't enter the house, so what? It doesn't really matter at all. Um, I'm glad that he didn't pull the trigger. I think if he had pulled the trigger, this might have been seen as uh, too much force used. But I think if these guys then start advancing, especially if you add... Uh, you know, there's more than one guy out there. Yep. He didn't seem to be a really big guy. You know, the facts are, are starting to shift in favor of making it more reasonable for him to start pulling the trigger. But, you know, at the end of the day, uh, all of these questions really come down to a prediction, right? It's a prediction. It's about, hey, I would like to know whether you guys and how you guys would predict that, let's just say 12 people right. who are randomly selected, will they find that what this person did was reasonable? given all of the various rules that are the general rules we have for self-defense. Things like, you know, you don't get to use deadly physical force to protect property. Things like it's got to be an imminent threat, which I think we had here. Uh, things like there's got to be a risk of death or serious physical injury. I think there's reasons to believe that that was the case yeah. here. Will they think that what was done here, which is basically pointing the gun at somebody under these circumstances, is that reasonable? I got to tell you, if I'm on the jury, this reasonable. is reasonable. Easy day. Easy day, no problem. And I think that, from certainly from in my view, from the a, both a tactical and a legal perspective, that use of force, which wasn't deadly force because he didn't press the trigger. Well, it was a threat of deadly force. It was force. a threat. And you have to remember, people sometimes get confused of this in almost all circumstances. You know, you can use deadly force or th they come together in the statute. It's a threat of deadly force or use of deadly right. force. But even though they don't spell it out there, you still need to use the least amount of force that's reasonably necessary. So if you and can he certainly did. Yes. If you can just threaten, just threaten. Do it. If you got to use and there's no other alternative and you're at risk of death or serious physical injury, like I like to say when I lecture on this topic, if, if it's better to be prosecuted for the crime, then what's going to happen is if you don't use deadly force, like you're going to be dead or then someone take else, it. then be prosecuted. And, and I think that in most jurisdictions, if those are your two choices, you're probably not going to get prosecuted anyways, because then the prosecutor will, will hopefully look at that and go, yeah, statutorily, there's no way I'm going to get a jury to agree right, with me that that we, was wrong. We look at this and what do we conclude? The guy inside the house, I mean, you could change some facts, right? You could, you could add facts and change the circumstances. We could play with this scenario all day long by adding and subtracting different facts. But based on what we believe of those facts, we got a good guy inside the house not looking for trouble, not looking for problems. He's got the door locked. He doesn't even open the door or anything like that. The door is smashed out. Yeah. Whatever the reasons were, he went and got that firearm. He believed that there was some threat out there. He was right about that because these guys did, did the uh, push the door. And so it seems to me this is well within the realm of reasonableness. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push a little bit and continue to ask because in Arizona, there's a pretty unique statute on this stuff. We've got some interesting stuff, and I think Arizona's firearms laws and self-defense laws are probably the best in the nation. At least from my perspective. Yeah, I, I, tend, I tend to agree with you. 13411, which is where I think you're going to go, um, is sort of an interesting statute. Because it gives us a presumption, right? So yeah. if somebody forcefully enters your home who's not authorized to be there, so we're not talking about a custodial parent. Or... Well, we, should talk, we should talk about the statute. Okay, right? please. Was it 13411 yeah. you were talking about? Yeah. Okay. So this is our crime prevention statute. This is a different reason you get to shoot and kill another person. And our statute details that you can use uh, if it's a you can use deadly physical force if it's immediately necessary to prevent another person from committing one of the listed crimes. Burglary indeed is one of the crimes on there. This looks like it's a burglary because you know a burglary is the uh, breaking and entering uh, or remaining unlawfully mm -hmm. inside another person's. And it, there are different degrees of burglary here. You're dealing with a residential home with the intent to commit a felony or a theft. So it looks like we had something like that here. Um, and so if it's immediately necessary, and there are some nice bells and whistles in that statute, which you mentioned, yep. which is uh, you, if, if the jury believes that you are acting to prevent another person from committing one of the listed crimes, the burglary that we were just talking about, that let's just say for the sake of our discussion, we witnessed in this video, right? We saw a burglary occur in front. And remember, people sometimes are confused about burglary. They think you've got to steal something or do something. Once you enter yeah. with the intent to do that, the burglary is now complete. So what you had was that burglary. If this person is trying to stop that, is trying to repel that, 
um, if it's immediately necessary to use deadly physical force. And I think that's the issue that we'll come back to. Yeah. But you are then presumed to be acting reasonably. You have a presumption. And as you know, that's the whole ball game. Because if you acted reasonably, you're in, you're, it's a not guilty. But this is a rebuttable presumption. So what that means is you know, there's some irrebuttable presumptions and very few of them, if that's the presumption, that's, you accept it as true. Here, it's a rebuttable presumption. So we start from the proposition that the person is acting reasonably. That doesn't mean, though, that the prosecutor can't come in and say, let me present a whole bunch of reasons why the person was not acting reasonably. Maybe there were many other ways and things you could have done to prevent this burglary. Um, that you, besides using or threatening deadly physical force, that you didn't employ. There could be things that could be brought up by a prosecutor that could convince a jury that the presumption should be rebutted, mm -hmm. that you are no longer presumed to be acting reasonably. So um, I think that the real linchpin on that statute, which is why I'm, I worry about people using this statute, because you know it's very hard to imagine a situation where there's nothing else you could have done but threatened or used deadly physical force to prevent this burglary. Maybe these guys knock the door open, they see people are there and they run away. I don't know. That's what happened in that case. Well, he had with a gun, the gun in her face. Yeah. But maybe even without the gun, maybe mm. even without the threat of the deadly physical force, maybe these guys expected this was going to be a, a house that was not occupied. They were just going to push the door down, come in, steal stuff and leave. And then they see several people inside and they would have run away at that point. I don't know. So, um, but but this one, I think this guy's in pretty good shape. Uh, yeah, he's, he called cops. They came. They, they, they saw these guys. They're still looking for those guys, too. You see any problems with somebody using an AR-15 for home defense, Mark, from I a legal perspective? I don't. I, I think people get excited about the AR-15. I think this is uh, uh, a great weapon if you're, you're wanting to strike at a distance, right? But there may be other reasons why people use AR-15s. For The reason I like an AR-15... Uh, which is what we call an M16 A2 service rifle when I served in the Marine Corps, is because that's the weapon I'm most familiar with. That's the one I know how to break down in the dark right. and field strip and put back together and maintain. So I, I just happen to be more comfortable with that weapon. For me, it's not a matter of need. Do you need an AR-15? No. Uh, free people uh, are entitled to have what they want, in not my opinion, need. so long as they're peaceful about it. So I don't have any problem with using an AR-15. It's the same argument that uh, you could use a carving knife that you might use to carve up a turkey for Thanksgiving. If that's the weapon you happen to have handy at the time to use, that's what you use. It's like you could use a baseball yeah. bat as well, right? It's, it's made to hit a baseball, like an AR-15. Maybe indeed it's used to uh, hit a man-sized target at 300 meters like we did in the Marine Corps. But just because it's designed for that purpose doesn't mean it can not still be an effective weapon. The thing that, that is a bit concerning is, you know, the power of the AR-15. You could go right through some drywall and maybe injure a third party in another home. So this is why, you know, for me, for home defense, I think, I think a shotgun is kind of hard to beat. I think a shotgun is, is easy to hit the target. I don't think you're likely to go through the walls and whack the neighbors. And, it, and you know, it has that very distinctive sound that usually gets the job done. You know, that ch ch so we, we could talk about that from a tactical perspective, a few things. I think that um, I love the shotgun for home defense. I've got uh, a couple of great ones. We've been doing a lot of shotgun work. Um, you know, actually, from the ballistics perspective, shotgun belts will go through just as many interior walls as a rifle round will, mm. believe it or not. So that's a significant issue. But a shotgun could be a great tool, too. I use a shotgun. In fact, my son just bought a home, he and his wife, and uh, we gifted him a home defense shotgun as their their home their their home gift. But um, So that's another day. But... Uh, not a significant issue of the AR, but guys, I want you to recognize this uh, the standard that comes down to again and again. Did you act reasonably? Would a jury of your peers say this was a reasonable thing to do? Mark, I think, acted reasonably. I think he has no worries whatsoever. Start pressing the trigger, your standards go up. So make sure that you're continuing to act reasonably because the jury will require it. Mark? You know, just, just one other point yes. on, on the issue of you know choosing your weapon. Um, many statutes, and certainly Arizona is among them, not, don't just talk about firearms, nope. right? They talk about uh, dangerous instruments as well, and virtually anything can be a dangerous instrument. You could use a pen as a dangerous instrument, right? If John I, Wick. Yeah, if I, if I use a pen and I stab at you with my pen, my ink pen, that would li very likely be charged as an aggravated assault in Arizona because I used a dangerous instrument 
in the context of this assault. So it doesn't have to be a firearm. It could be a baseball bat. You can be using deadly physical force with a baseball bat if you hit somebody over the head with it. So um, the issue is the amount of harm that you're actually doing to repel the attack. And I think it's sort of this very civilized principle. That's what we're trying to get to, right? It's a civilized principle to say, look, you shouldn't be an initiator of force. We agree on that. Mm -hmm. If you need to use force against an initiator of force, use the least amount necessary. That's really what we're trying to get to. If you keep those sort of general ideas, the general concepts in mind, nine times out of ten you're going to be okay. Mark, appreciate the wisdom, man. Thanks for having me.